Hi, I'm Nikki from Find Me Crafting. I am a list person. I have lists for absolutely everything in my life. It's how I stay organized. The one problem I face is that my notes themselves are not always organized. I tend to lose them because I write them on whatever piece of paper I happen to have handy. Now, if I'm lucky, those are sticky notes. If I'm not, it's a random receipt or a piece of paper. And then sometimes I lose a piece of paper and that drives me insane. But then I found the greatest pattern ever. This is the Moon Dance Notepad Holder from Sincerely Jen. I love this pattern. It keeps everything organized, a pen, a notebook, super cute. And the cover is really firm, so you can take all of your notes in one spot. You don't have to find another surface to write on. I love these things. The only downside for me is that she uses all vinyl fabric, which makes this pattern super quick and fast and fun but I don't have a lot of vinyl fabric and I'm too cheap to go out and buy all the cute, fun prints that you can find in vinyl. What I wanted to do was make my moon dance out of all cotton. I did add in a little sticky note pocket because I use sticky notes a ridiculous amount and I find them to be very useful. I now have these notepad holders in the car, in my bag to go to church. When I get ready to plan for a trip, I pick one and put all of my notes inside of it. If you're like me, you're gonna to wanna to put these all over the place, and then you're gonna to wanna to start giving them away because who doesn't love beautiful organization? Come on, I'll show you how. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any new patterns or projects. Here's what you're going to need for supplies. First and foremost, you're going to need the actual pattern. I'll put a link in the description box down below. You can go buy the pattern and then download it and print it out. Mine look really well loved because I keep reusing them over and over and over to make more of these. I use all of the templates for the junior legal size pattern, but I do have to alter my templates just a little bit in order to use all cotton fabric. I'm not going to give you the specific measurements of all the templates after I alter them because I don't want to give away this pattern. So I'm just going to tell you how I alter them. For the lining main pattern, I cut 1 8 of an inch off the top and 1 8 of an inch off the side. From the lining center pattern, I cut 1 8 of an inch off the top. From the lining main stabilizer piece, I cut an eighth of an inch off the top and a half inch off the side. And I don't do anything to the exterior template. As for the rest of the supplies, you're also going to need some cotton fabric. I have these here. I'm going to be using this blue for my exterior and the purple for my interior. It doesn't look like I have much fabric here because I've already cut my pattern pieces out. If you can cut your pattern, if the print of your exterior can be cut vertically like this, if the print doesn't look upside down or sideways, a third of a yard will work for your exterior. If, however, you need it to be widthwise like this horizontal you would need a half a yard and also when i make the pockets on the inside of my notebook holder i use the interior fabric for most of it but for my pockets i do like to have one of them be the exterior fabric just for a little bit of contrast if you do that a third of a yard of the exterior or a half depending on your print will work for the exterior and a third of a yard will work for your interior. If, however, you want your interior to all be one solid color, you will need a half a yard in order to get the length. You're also going to need about a third of a yard of iron-on interfacing. I'm using Pellon SF-101. If you want to add a pen loop inside, you're going to need some of this half-inch wide elastic trim. You only need two inches of this. You're going to need some chipboard to make the front and back covers sturdy. I'm using two millimeter thickness. That's pretty strong. This is a brand I get from Michaels. And if you have a 12 by 12 inch sheet like this, you can also use the Cricut brand, which comes in this size. One piece will be enough. In order to cut the chipboard, you're going to need a craft knife like this. This is the Cricut True Control Blade. And you will need a cutting mat like this one so that you don't cut anything important. Along those lines, you're also going to want a cutting mat and a cutting ruler and a rotary blade to cut your fabric or some fabric scissors. You're going to need a fabric marking pen or pencil. This is a chalk pencil that I really like. 
you need a fabric glue stick, you need a sewing machine and some matching thread. I'm using 100% polyester. You're going to need an iron and an ironing board. You're going to need sewing pins. I also like to use sewing clips. You're going to need a zipper foot for your sewing machine if you happen to have one. I find it very useful to use 1 8 inch wide double-sided sewing tape for putting the pen loop in. And at the end, you are going to want a junior legal pad to put inside your notepad holder. For a sewing project, this notebook holder actually has very little sewing necessary. Most all of the work is done as you're prepping your fabric pieces. So just know that while you're doing this part and it's taking you a little bit of time, you're actually getting very close to the goal. The sewing is only about 10 to 15 minutes. So stick with this prep because you're doing the work. I'm gonna start by prepping my exterior fabric first. So I have it wrong side facing up right now, and I'm going to trace my exterior template onto the back of this fabric. Just know that we are going to be adding, so leave yourself a border as you're tracing this template out. You might not be able to see the lines, but I do have a white line where I've traced my template. And now to all four sides, I want to add three fourths of an inch. Now you can trace this out and then cut it. I'm gonna make it a little easier on myself and I'm gonna cut it as I'm adding it. I'm going to line up my three fourths inch mark. It's my third line in right here by my thumb. I'm gonna line that up right on the line I just drew and then I'm gonna use my rotary blade to cut it out. So I don't know if you can see, but I do have 3 fourths inch extra from where my template line is. And I'm gonna do that for all four sides. I've got my exterior piece with the extra 3 fourths inch added all the way around. And now you wanna cut a piece of interfacing just using the regular template. So you're not gonna add anything, you're just gonna trace around this template and cut out your interfacing. I'm going to line this up. Actually, you can use the lines that you drew for the original template line. Just center it up right inside those lines, and I'm going to iron it on just like that. Now it's time to bust out that fabric glue stick. I'm going to glue the extra 3 fourths inch onto this interfacing onto the back. I'm gonna fold it this way. And your interfacing acts as a natural line. It'll fold right there where the extra three-fourths ends. What you wanna do, I start with the long sides. I'm going to apply some glue on my fabric. And then just fold it up over the interfacing and press down. You want this line to be nice and straight because this is the line for the front of your notebook holder. This is what you're going to see from the front. So now I'm gonna do the other long side. And once again, just fold up that 3 fourths of an inch so you have a nice straight line with your fold and press down, smooth it out. Now I'm going to do the short sides. I'm going to put some glue on this short side here. Maybe not a blob of glue. We don't need that. All right. And once again, fold up to your 3 fourths inch line where your interfacing is and press down. While I'm on this side, I am gonna fold these corners in because if you leave it like this, a lot of times your corner will show from the front because that little bit of fabric is hanging over. We don't, we don't want that. So toward the inside of my fabric piece, I'm gonna put a little bit more glue and I'm just gonna fold my corner over. I want this corner to be nice and sharp. Sometimes I use my nail to fold right at the corner. You just wanna fold it over and press down. So you end up with this, and from the front, it looks like a perfect corner. And that's just gotta hold it in place till we sew it. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the inside. I'm going to put some glue, and once again, just fold my corner over. Right here is where I want the line to be, so I'm gonna kinda hold my nail here and just 
fold the fabric right there and push down. Now, if this doesn't work for you, just unstick it and put it back, try it again. But see how perfect that corner is? Now I'm gonna do it for the other side of my exterior piece. Once you get that done, your exterior is completely ready to be sewed, unless you would like to add a bag tag, in which case this is a good time to do it. You have to decide where you wanna put your bag tag. I like to put mine in the lower right corner. So if you fold it over the way it's going to be once you sew it, line up your edges. You could determine where you wanna put it. You can put it on the front corner, you can put it in the front center, you can put it on the back, wherever you wanna go with it. Once you decide where you're going to put it, just like that, just to make sure that it stays straight and even, it's actually quite helpful to put a little bit of that uh, double-sided sewing tape on the back and peel off your backing. And just place it so that you know it's straight and it'll stay in place as you take it to the sewing machine and sew around your bag tag. So believe it or not, at this point, the exterior is ready to go. So just put this off to the side till later. So now I'm going to cut my interior pieces. So with your interior fabric, you're going to take the lining main template. You're going to place it on the back of your fabric. You're going to trace around the edge, and then you're gonna add 3 fourths of an inch of fabric, just like we did for the exterior, and cut it out. You need to make two just like that with the interior fabric. And you wanna do the same thing with your interior fabric for the lining center. So you're going to trace the lining center onto the back, except this time I only add half an inch extra instead of three fourths of an inch. So this is done the exact same, except half an inch extra at the top, bottom and sides instead of three fourths of an inch. And once you have that cut out, this is ready. You're going to do the same thing with your interfacing that you did with the exterior. You're just going to trace two pieces out with this template and cut them and one piece with the lining center and cut that out. We don't add any extra fabric to the interfacing. We just cut it out using the regular templates that we've already altered. And then just like we did with the exterior, we're going to take our interfacing Place it right inside the box that you've traced. That is how you get it nice and center. And just iron it on to both of your interior pieces and your center piece. Once you have it interfaced, you're ready for that glue stick again. I start with the long sides on these pieces as well. And we're gonna repeat the same process we did with the exterior. So apply some glue to the long side. Fold it up right at your interfacing, which gives you that three-fourths of an inch. Repeat for the other long side. Then move on to the short side. Apply glue there. Fold it up. And then we're going to do the corners just like we did before. So toward the inside of your fabric, I'm going to put a little bit of glue there. And I'm just going to fold my corner over so that it's very pointy and smooth it down. You get a little bit of glue on your finger, but it's worth it. And you can check, pointy corner, and the other side. And then just repeat for the other side and do that for both of your lining main pieces and your center piece the same way. So at this point, if you were to put your pieces together, this is what it would look like. Here's your exterior and your interior pieces look like this. And then underneath, you're gonna have this center one so it would look like this now what we want to do is create the pockets on the right side and the left side one side is going to be to hold the notebook holder itself and the other side is just to have a pocket to use and then if you'd like you can also add a sticky note pocket on this side i'm going to begin adding the extra pocket to the right side first so for both the left and the right side pockets you need to cut an additional piece of fabric that is seven and one eighth inches wide by 14 inches tall. I'm gonna be making my pocket on the left with the exterior fabric, just because I like the contrast. You can do all of this in interior fabric, whatever you think would look good. In addition to your fabric pieces, you are also going to need to cut two more pieces of interfacing that are five and five eighth inches wide and six and one eighth inch tall. So you have 
the right side and the left side, both pieces of fabric are the same size, both pieces of interfacing are the same size. So for both pieces of your pocket fabric, you're going to repeat this process. You're going to bring your fabric piece to the ironing board and you're going to put the wrong sides. You can't really tell with my fabric, but this is the wrong side of my fabric. You want wrong sides together as you fold the 14 inch side, the long side, and you want to match up your edges and you want to iron this so that you have a nice crease over here on the left. When you open it up, you have this nice crease here in the center. And you're going to place your interfacing right there at that crease flush with the crease, right? You want it all the way up into that crack, but then centered in the middle. So you have about the same amount of fabric around the outside edges. Once you get it all lined up, you're going to iron the interfacing down. Once you have the interfacing adhered, you can also fold it back over and re-iron your crease. And now I wanna take this to the sewing machine and up here at my fold, I want to do a 1 8 inch top stitch. So now this is my pocket piece that I've just top stitched across the, the fold line with. I'm going to take one of my lining main pieces that has the interfacing on it and I want to line this up on the top and honestly it's easiest if you just flip it over. You want there to be about three-fourths of an inch extra around all three of these sides. So you get it centered up, and then I'm just gonna begin clipping in place. I like to start with the sides. I'm going to just clip my extra fabric to the back. I'm gonna move on to the other side. Now I'm gonna work on flipping the bottom side up. And the thing you have to remember here is you don't want this extra fabric poking out to the side on your lining. So make sure you hold that kind of tight as you fold it up to meet the other side. And make sure that this side doesn't fold as you're doing it. Sometimes it wants to bubble up and crease. And once you have it looking the way you want, you just clip it in place. Once you have it all clipped, you can flip it over and this is what your pocket's going to look like. We're not even gonna sew anything right now. At this point, the right side is ready for next steps. So let's move on to the left side. So with my left side panel, remember I'm using an exterior piece for that pocket on the left. I'm gonna repeat the same process I just did with the right side. So I'm gonna fold it wrongs together and iron it. I'm gonna put my interfacing here in the center, iron it on, Recrease it with my iron and then go put a top stitch line in right near my fold, right the top of my fold with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. If you want to add a sticky note pocket, we need to create that pocket now so that we can stitch it onto the larger pocket that goes on the inside. So to do that, you need to cut a piece of your fabric. I'm using my interior fabric. You cut the fabric at four and a half inches wide by five and a half inches long. You're also going to need a piece of interfacing that is two and three eighth inches wide and three and seven eighth inches tall. I'm going to fold this fabric right sides together. Like I said, this one's hard to tell, but I'm folding it right sides together in half the long way and I'm going to iron it. And now I want the interfacing to be on the inside, obviously not on the outside. So these are my right sides. I wanna put my interfacing over here. So folding it in half has given me the crease and I'm going to place this very much the same as I did with the pocket piece. I'm going to put my interfacing right up near where my fold is, right where I just made that line, right where I just made that crease. And there should be about a fourth of an inch around each of the edges. So center it up. And once again, iron it on the wrong side of the fabric. Then I'm just gonna fold it again on that same line that I already have. So once again, right sides are together. And I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and I want to sew these three edges, except on one side, this is gonna be my third side over here, I'm gonna leave about this inch, inch and a half 
unsewn. So I'm gonna sew on this side, down the long side, and up here, but stop here and leave this unsewn. Now through this opening that I've left in the side, I'm gonna turn everything right side out. So I'm just gonna open it up and roll the inside to the outside. It helps to have kind of a pokey stick to make sure your corners are completely poked out so that they look square. I'm gonna take this back to my ironing board. I am going to iron it flat. I am also going to turn my open edges in I want to push them and fold them so that this edge looks like my sewn edge. So you just flip it inside your open edge and I'm just going to press this so that it looks even with the rest of this so that it's ready to sew. So now starting at my open edge, I am going to sew around the entire pocket with a 1 8 inch top stitch so it'll close that opening and top stitch the whole rest of the pocket. So now I have my little sticky note pocket ready to go and I have the pocket itself ready with the fold and my top stitching along the top. What I want to do is sew this onto this. Now I like to put my sticky note pocket kind of in the middle of where this pocket's going to be. You could put it closer to the bottom if you wanted to do that, but I am going to give you the measurements to make it more like this. I'm going to use pins and pin it in place, and I want to place it two inches up from my bottom edge. And to center it, it should be one and five eighths inches in from the right and one and five eighths inches in from the left. So once you have it measured and it's in the right spot, I'm going to use some pins to pin it in place. Now I'm going to take this back to my sewing machine and using the line I made from my top stitching, I am going to stitch down one side across the bottom and back up this other side. Obviously you do not want to sew across this line because then it's not a pocket, it's just a pretty decorative rectangle. So now my right side pocket is ready to go because I have my sticky note pocket attached to the larger pocket. I'm going to now position my pocket onto the left side of my main lining piece. So just like we did for the right side, I'm going to lay it on top. I'm going to flip it over and I want equal distance around the edges. I want three fourths of an inch at the top, bottom and sides and start folding it to the back side and clipping it. I start with the side pieces and fold those in. And just like we did with the right side lining piece, I'm going to fold the bottom up, making sure that this flap stays folded, doesn't get bent, and that you're not going to see my fold from the front. So once you have it done, the front should look like this. So I have my exterior, I have the right side lining, I have the left side lining, and I have my center. And it's time to put them all together. So you open up your exterior. I actually have this line right here, that is my center. So I'm gonna put my center piece, you can kind of eyeball this because we're gonna overlap it. So it doesn't have to be dead center, you won't notice. So just make sure it's even from the top and bottom. I'm going to put the right side lining on and make sure that it is lined up over here, but I definitely do not want to see my lining from the exterior. So I'm going to put it just slightly inside my exterior. And then you're going to do the same with the left side where you want it to be just inside the exterior fabric so that you don't see it from the front. And now I'm going to reclip everything so that my outside is connected to my inside. Now that I have it all clipped, I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and this is the big moment where you put it all together. I like to start over here on the right and we're going to now sew with a 1 8 inch seam allowance down this side, around the bottom, up the side, and over. So just the outside 
edges. Do not, at this point, sew any of this. You just want to go around the outside. So what you should have at this point looks something like this. And this is all attached. You have the front and back and you just have these pockets open. So now it's time to cut your chipboard. So you're going to use the main stabilizer template that we've altered. So that's an eighth of an inch off the top, half an inch off one of the sides. And I'm gonna trace that times two onto the front of my chipboard. Now with the chipboard placed on a cutting mat, I'm going to use my Cricut True Control Blade, which is a lot like an X-Acto knife. So if you have an X-Acto knife, it'll do the same thing. I'm going to line up my cutting ruler with the line I just drew. And now I'm gonna press down pretty hard with my left so that it holds it in place. And I'm going to make a pass with my knife right here against the edge. Whoops, and it shifted a little, so you have to press down really hard. Okay, I'm gonna try that again. And I'm gonna do that about five or six more times, and you will feel it cut through. So now I'm just gonna repeat that process to cut out my two pieces of chipboard. Now we're gonna put our chipboard into the pockets here that we've created with the fabric. Slide it in and push it all the way in as far as it'll go. Now at this point, I'm gonna see how much edge I have left here. I can feel where my chipboard is, it's right here. I think I will have enough. I need about a fourth of an inch right here to sew this pocket closed. If I don't have enough, if I am just not sewing as straight as I would like today, which happens more often than not, I would take that chipboard back out and cut off another eighth of an inch until it does fit. You do the same thing for the other side where I've slid this in. I'm going to push it all the way in. And this one, I believe I might also have enough of an overlap there that I can sew it shut. Now, before I get to sewing, I do wanna add my pen loop. So I've cut this piece of elastic trim to two inches. I'm gonna use a little bit of the double-sided tape on the ends here. If it shifts around as you're sewing, you end up with a crooked pen loop. And every time I look at the one that I did that to, it bothers me. So you can place these. I like to place them just under my pockets, like I'm lining it up with the top of my pocket. So I put the adhesive on the top shiny part of my elastic. Move my clip out of the way. And I'm just going to set that so that the adhesive is underneath and touching my fabric. And on the other side, I'm gonna place it in there. Just get it all lined up and press down so that it's gonna stay in place while you run this stitch. Now at this point, I am gonna switch to my zipper foot because it can get you a lot closer to your chipboard than a standard foot will. And you wanna get as close as you can to that chipboard. And we are now going to sew down these seams right here to close the pockets and hold the chipboard in place so it doesn't shift around. All you need now to be ready to go is to add a notepad, a pen, and some sticky notes. Have fun making a ton of these and giving them to everybody you know. Happy crafting.